Now that we have our database schema properly managed, we need a way inside of ASP.NET to get that data back. So, for example, um, after I update my display toggle, um, let's look at our diagram again. So we have a database. And now we actually have something a little bit more concrete. We have a users table. We have a roles table. And we have a user roles table. The user roles table has a user ID and a role ID. So the user ID is related to the user's ID column. The role ID is related to the role ID column. So we have three tables, and each three of these tables are going to have data in them in the form of rows. And the rows are going to be having to, well, be related to each other, I suppose. In some sort of way, we need to be able to query this database and understand the data inside of code by using normal c -sharp .NET objects. We want to use normal c -sharp classes and we want to have them instantiated and hydrated by in Hibernate. But unfortunately, in Hibernate has some complexity to it. it. Has some complexity out of the necessity, out of necessity, simply because what it does is, well, fairly powerful. In Hibernate, its job is to take these three tables and turn them into two classes. So I'm just going to use this as a concrete example. We have users, roles, and one table that relates them. Within Hibernate, I want to create two classes. I want a user class, and I want a role class. Seems fairly straightforward. So far, yeah. Now, the multi multiplicity between these two t uh, entities is going to be many to many. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean there's going to be a relationship where one user can have multiple roles and one role can have multiple users. That's called a many-to-many -many relationship. So the many-to-many -many relationship between these two classes needs to be understood by an Hibernate so that it can hydrate an object graph for us so that our controllers can ask in Hibernate for this data. And then an Hibernate's going to reach out to oops. And Hibernate's going to reach out to the database and turn the database into this object graph. So there are a bunch of missing components to this diagram. A bunch of specific missing components that we have to understand about in Hibernate to work with it. This is just a high level explanation. Let's talk about some of the terminology that we're going to be using in the upcoming videos and place them on this diagram so hopefully to hopefully give people some context about what I'm talking about. The configuration between an Hibernate and the database is called the mapping. That makes sense. The mapping is responsible for this line. The mapping says tells an Hibernate which columns relate to which properties. Because remember, the user is going to have multiple properties like name. The name property is going to match the name column. But it's not going to be always that simple, because the user is also going to need a roles object. The roles object is going to be a collection, and it's going to have to be hydrated by our mapping. So our mapping is going to have to describe the relationship between our entities that an Hibernate uh, knows about and our database. And that's what a mapping does. So every single entity within an Hibernate is going to have a corresponding mapping, which will instruct in Hibernate how to hydrate the object graph. So far, so good? So far, so good. The configuration in an Hibernate c exists. So we have our controller. Um, I'm going to have to move this diagram off a little bit because we're going to start talking now about the individual components within an Hibernate that contain different things. Because we have a couple different concepts to understand. We have the config object, 
it's actually configuration, but I'm not, I'm too lazy. Um, we have the session factory. Actually, I'm going to write it like this. We have a session. We have a transaction. These are the four most important components of an Hibernate. Okay, well, what's in the config? The config contains mappings. So let's go ahead and erase that. Config contains mappings. And it contains the connection string, which I'll just abbreviate with constring. Okay? Alrighty. That is the configuration. The configuration results in building a session factory. A session factory is an object that contains all of the information that was um, added to the config. The session factory is responsible for being a global object in our application that understands the mappings and the connection string. But so far, we haven't actually opened up a connection to the database. That's because this, so let's go ahead and move, uh, whoops, let's go ahead and move this stuff down a little bit because there's actually a conceptual difference between the session factory and config and the session and transaction because this is app level. These things are global to the entire application, the config and the session factory. The Alrighty. session and the transaction are, um, I'm going to redo these lines because I think it would look a little bit better if I did this. The session and the transaction are at the request level. What does that mean? Well, it means the session and transaction are created per request which means that the controller is going to ask for a session and then it's going to open a transaction. So what does a session contain? Well, a session contains the connection to the database, which means that every request will have a single connection to the database and that is basically in the session object from in Hibernate. Sound good? That sounds very good. Okay, then we have a transaction. What's a transaction? Well, a transaction is a unit of work. A transaction represents a group of related commands that need to be executed on the database server in an atomic fashion. What do I mean by atomic? atomic? Well, if you think about the word atomic, you'll see the word atom. What does the word atom mean? Atom means the smallest unit of something, which means that an atomic tr a transaction or, or an atomic group of commands represents a single unit of change. For example, a single unit of change might be the addition of a user. What do we have to do when we add a user? Well, we have to check uh, for unique email, insert user, and then insert user roles. This I would consider to be a transaction because it is a single unit of work that happens to contain multiple steps. Okay. So in, in Hibernate, you always will want to work within a transaction. And that's important because let's say that we have this check unique email, insert user, insert user roles, and then we have a big error right here. And it just dies. And the complete, the, the app server just dies completely. What do you think is going to happen? I have no idea. Well, the user and the user roles will still be in there. 
what we would want to happen is if at any point in this entire unit of work there's an error that can't be recovered from, we want the entire group of changes to be removed from the database. Alrighty. So basically, save the system. Exactly. Save the consistency of the system. That's why we, that's why we put all of our commands into transactions. Gotcha. So in Hibernate, we have a transaction object. We won't be using much directly, but it is there, and it's important to understand inside of our diagram. Alrighty. Okay, so just to recap, we have an Hibernate, which allows us to look at our database through the eyes of an object-oriented object graph. We have a database which stores our data. We have mappings that map from objects in an Hibernate and our database. Our controller will open up a session and a transaction into an Hibernate use that session and transaction to have in Hibernate access the database, which uses our mappings, which hydrates our object graph, which sends it all the way back to the controller as a group of nice little objects. Very nice. So that's that diagram. Then as far as the different components of in Hibernate, we have two app level components, our configuration, which is the object we start with. We give it our mappings and our connection string. That turns into a session factory, which sits on our application, not on our request. The session factory is used by every request to open up a connection to the database called a session. And the session is used to open up a unit of work called a transaction. Alrighty, that all makes sense. All right, so you think you're ready to uh, jump into an Hibernate now? Look at some code? <laughs> I think I am as ready as I have ever been in my life. Awesome. We'll and I mean that exactly the way I said it. Oh, hey, Nelson, are we finishing out this video? Yes. This would be a great time to mention something we didn't do in the last video. Right. Um, yeah, we had a slight um, oversight. Um, we didn't commit. Yeah, so everybody commit. Yep, right now. Just stop. I'll wait for you. All right. Okay. I'm committed. Actually, well, no, you can just pause the video until you're done committing. <laughs> I don't know why, why you do that. But anyway, we'll see you guys in a bit. All right.